thank you. Teacher. So, yes. Uh, what, what is academic English? Is for beginners, intermediate, advanced? Or? It's for anybody, really for anybody. So um, today we're going to um, be looking at um, reading. We're going to be doing some reading and um, testing kind of our, our reading comprehension. So um, I have a, a reading passage that we're going to read together and answer some questions on. And if we still have time after that, um, whatever you guys really feel like, either we might do, I might open it up for questions or we might do some simple sentence exercises, just kind of a, a grab bag of anything that you need to improve your English in an academic setting. So, yeah, so it'll be fun. So, um, I'll introduce myself uh, for those of you who don't know me. My name is Shanae, and I am from the United States. I live in California, and um, my background is in reading. Um, I have a degree in English, and I have a degree in creative writing. So, Basically, I like to uh, share my knowledge and expertise when it comes to those two things. So that's what I, I, I've been concentrating on actually all day for all of my classes. So um, um, I studied at um, the University of Arizona in Tucson. So go Wildcats. <laughs> um, that's where I'm from. I live in California now, but I was pretty much... I lived in Arizona my whole life, so I've been in California now for almost seven years, almost seven years. So I graduated in 2006, and um, I've been here ever since. So I actually, I taught reading, I taught reading for two years, um, and then I got out of education for a while, and now here I am, and I'm back. <laughs> So I uh, can't can't seem to get away from of, it. Uh, so. Yeah. Is your accent of California or Arizona? I'm sorry. Is your accent of California or Arizona? Um, I don't know. I would say, I don't know. I would say it's an Arizona accent, I guess. But the longer I'm in California. I guess the more it turns into a California accent. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I'm a, I'm a desert. We, we call us, uh, if you're from Arizona, we, we call ourselves desert rats. So um, we like the desert. And um, California, where, I'm, where I live now, it's, I live at the base of a mountain. So it's quite cold here um, in the winter. Not nearly as, as uh, Arizona was not nearly as cold as it is here. So, and um, Juan, nice to see you um, outside. I am feeling better. I'm not totally well now, but I am feeling better. So, um, yeah, so that's a, that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm 28. I'm married, and um, I'm expecting my first child in September. So, um, I'm pregnant. <laughs> so, um, it's no fun being sick and pregnant, I'll tell you that, because I'm not allowed to take any medicine. So, I just kind of have to suck it up and tough it out. So, I have Kleenex, and <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> so, um, but um, I'm glad to be, I've been off work for like a week now, so I'm glad to be back. So um, let's first start off by just kind of going around the room and introducing ourselves. Just say where you're from and, I don't know, whatever you want to say about yourself. So um, Adolfo, we will start with you. Uh, I'm Adolfo, I'm 17, and I'm from Brazil. <laughs> Very good. And um, let's see, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi. You sound like you're really far away. <laughs> Hello. Where are you from, Brian? Uh, I am from Colombia. From Colombia, nice. What part of Colombia? What? 
Where, what part of Colombia? What city? Cali. Say that again? Cali. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. Very good. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. And um, Carlos? Hi. Uh, I am from Mexico. I am 23 years old and I am learning English because I it's a beautiful language and I am studying web design and uh, and that's all. Very good. Where in Mexico? In La Paz, Baja California. Oh, you're close to me. Yes. <laughs> you're close to me. <laughs> Very good. Bienvenidos. Bienvenidos. And, Thank you. <laughs> and Daniel. Hi. I'm Daniel. I'm from Spain, Canary Island. I'm a Spanish teacher over here in a public school. And, you know, I want to learn English. Very cool. I um, my Spanish teacher was from Spain at university. So, okay. yeah, her name was Araceli. She was awesome. So, welcome, mm -hmm. welcome, you. welcome. And Gabriel. Hello, um, I'm Gabriel. I'm from Cartagena, Colombia, and I'm 22 years old. Very nice. Welcome, welcome. And uh, Sajiv. Hi, this is Shajib from Bangladesh. Uh, you know, Bangladesh is a South Asian country, and I live here in Dhaka, that's the capital of Bangladesh. I'm 21 years of age, and I'm doing my Bachelor in Engineering, Computer Science and Engineering. Um, that's it. Awesome, very good. And Sofiane? Hi, everybody. My name is Sofiane. I'm from Algeria. I'm a uh, I mean, I'm studying in high school. I study in high school. What year are you in high school, Sofiane? Uh, second one. Second year. Okay. So are you 15, 16? Uh, no, I'm uh, 17 because uh, in uh, in our country, uh, I study three years in high school. Oh, okay. Four okay. years in middle school. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Very cool. Very cool. And um, let's see, is it Amp? Hello. Hi. Hi. I am from Ecuador. Very good. And um, are you a student, Amp, or do you work, or? Um, I am not working for the moment because I am an employee. But I'm trying to learn English. <laughs> it's a good time to learn English, right? Good time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very good, guys. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to screen share with you. We're going to read a passage about um, kangaroos. <laughs> and um, we're going to answer some questions about it as well. So kind of you'll get a, a, um, some practice with your reading skills and your comprehension skills both. So let me go ahead and share this with you. Um, does this, I, I have a feeling this needs to be bigger, am I right? It's good. Yeah. Yes. Is that good or should I make it bigger by one more? A little it's bit good. more. A little, little bit more? Is that better? Okay. 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 Awesome. Okay. Um, let's just, we'll just go around the room and have everyone um, read a paragraph out loud. So, Adolfo, we'll start with you. If you want to read this first paragraph for me. Okay. Written passage. Ever since they were discovered by early settlers, kangaroos have fascinated biologists. They are unique animals considered both comical and exotic. They are found only in Australia, New Zealand, and a few surrounding islands. Good. So um, what I like to kind of concentrate on when I teach academic English is looking at certain words in the context so that you get a more clear understanding of, of what we're reading. So basically, if you were taking a test, what I would suggest that you do is after you read each paragraph, start asking yourself some questions. 
So um, how I'll do it today is I'll ask you guys the questions, and um, obviously you'll you'll answer me. So um, who were kangaroos discovered by? By early settlers. Settlers. Uh huh. And what kind of scientists are interested in kangaroos? Biologists. Mm hmm And um, where do you find kangaroos? Australia and surrounding islands. Mm hmm So those would be kind of, that's kind of an example of if you were sitting there taking a test and this was what you were given to read, those would be kind of some questions that after you read the paragraph, you know, that you would ask yourself. And we're just kind of going to do this throughout the whole, um, the whole passage and then at the end there will actually be some some other questions. Um, let's I have see. A question. Sure. Was this text uh, a really TOEFL t text? Is it actually on the TOEFL exam? Yeah. I don't think this exact one is, but it's a good example of what would be on the TOEFL text. Or okay. test. Yeah, sorry. Not TOEFL text, TOEFL test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, let's see. Amp, can I get you to read the second paragraph for me? Of course. There are more than 50 species of kangaroos in existence today. The best known and largest species is the red and gray kangaroos, which can stand up to six feet and can weigh nearly 200 pounds. But there are kangaroo breeds that are much smaller, such as the musky rat kangaroo, which is only one foot tall. Kangaroos are very adaptable and can live in almost any climate. They can be found in mountainous regions, deserts, grasslands, even remote islands of the coast of southwestern Australia. Good. So, how many species of kangaroos are there today? Fifty. Fifty. Are there fifty? More than fifty. More than fifty. Yeah, more than fifty, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, what is the largest species of kangaroo? The red and, the red and, red and, and gray. Uh huh. And how tall are they? Six feet. Six feet. And how much do they weigh? 2,000 pounds. 200 pounds. Yeah, um, nearly, these are like kind of, um, that's another thing when you're doing reading, is to pay attention to... Um, Almost, yeah. Yeah, exactly, to pay attention to the modifiers. So we have mm -hmm. that they're nearly 200 pounds. So they're not quite 200 pounds, but they're close. And mm -hmm. then... There's also kangaroo breeds that are much smaller, and the example given here is which kind of kangaroo? Muskrat. Muskrat. Uh huh. And how tall is the muskrat? Only oh, one. Only tall. one. Uh huh. And where? What kind of climates can you find kangaroos in? Almost any climate. Mm hmm. Can you give me an yep. example? Deserts. Deserts. Grasslands. Grass Remote island, mountainous regions. Uh huh. Yeah, m mountainous. Yeah, we would say this. This word's pronounced mountainous. Mountainous. Uh huh. Mountainous. Mountainous. Yeah. Um, a question that I actually would have that I can't answer is how in the world <laughs> did they get to the remote islands? I don't know if if kangaroos are good swimmers I don't think they would be but somehow, <laughs> somehow, they, somehow they got to the islands so if anybody ever finds out how they got to the islands please let me know <laughs> so um, good and um, Brian can you read the next paragraph for me Are you there, Brian? Oh, no, he's gone. Okay, Carlos, can you read the next paragraph for me? Okay. Kangaroos are very well 
suit to their environment. They have adapted over millions of years to fit into their ecological niche. They have large ears and rel rel relatively small heads. Their front limbs are very small, but their paws are very nimble. Their hind legs are very large and powerful. When they are moving slowly, kangaroos walk on all four limbs with the front limbs barely touching the ground. But when they feel the need to move quickly, they stand nearly upright and start hopping on their hind legs. When they begin to hop, kangaroos use their muscular, agile tails to balance themselves and to help them change direction. Good, yeah. So, um, a couple, a couple things. Um, very good. Um, this word right here that I highlighted in blue, we pronounce that suited. 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 Suited, uh-huh. And suited. then um, this word we actually pronounce hind. 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 Yeah, good, good, yeah, exactly. So um, tell me about, someone tell me about kangaroos. Somebody tell me about what they look like. Ooh, and I took it away. <laughs> they are they are bigger. They they are big. Uh huh. What's what's big? What can you give me um a, a physical trait of them that's big? They have they have four arms. Uh, they could be like four or five feet taller. I, say that again. Four or five feet taller. Okay, when when would they be when would they be taller? When they are in danger. Uh huh. And what do they do if they feel like they're in danger? Uh, hopping. They jump. Uh, hinge back. Yeah. So when they're when they feel threatened, they stand upright, right? Like a human. Yeah. Uh huh. And what? Um, What's a feature about them that is large? Ears. ears. Yes, yes, their ears. They have big ears, but they have big ears, but what do they have that's small? Heads. Their heads. Head. What else? Yeah. Legs. Legs. Um, their frontal limbs. Limb. Yeah, they're. Right. We, yeah, their we. Balls. Call, yeah, they're four. We call them their four limbs. So in humans, it would be our arms, right? It would be our arms. So their forelimbs are small. Um, but what is, even though their forelimbs are small, what's special about them? They're nimble. Yeah, what does that mean, Adolfo? Can you explain nimble? They're, uh, they're fast. They can make things <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're 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 quick and they're they're agile, right? So they can do a lot of things K with their four limbs. K yeah. They have, a, they have a back into the belly. Is, say that again. They have backs adjacent to the bellies. Their their pouches <laughs> in their bellies, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. And what does it call? A pouch, a pouch. In English, we call it a pouch. Uh huh. A pouch. Okay. Yeah. P o u c h. Yeah, p o u c h. Exactly. And I'm sorry. What were you saying, Carlos? Uh, kangaroos are marsupials. 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 Uh huh. Exactly. Uh, they carry their their babies. How they? How do you say? Yeah. Cria. Yeah, the their babies. babies. Uh huh. In her. In their abdomens. Yep, in their pouches. In their exactly. Pouch. Uh huh. Exactly. Um, let's um, stick a more with what we've learned from from this in the text. This this paragraph also talks about their tails. What do they use their tails for? To balance. Uh huh. To balance, and what else? To locate. Uh, To choose directions. Yes. To Good. Yes. Change the direction. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. To help them change direction. Good. And if they're just chilling.
chilling, hanging out, not really <laughs> worried about it too much. How do they move around? On all the limbs? Yes, on all four limbs. Exactly. Exactly. Now, that's a different kind of... At this point, we're not talking about four limbs, but we're talking about four limbs. So keep, do, do keep they, that in mind. Do they jump? I think so, but, I, you know, I'm not sure. It's like every time you watch National Geographic, they're always standing upright. <laughs> you never really see them, you know, on all fours. So, but I think they kind of hop along. So, yeah. Um, let's go back to this. And Daniel, would you like to read the next paragraph for me? Okay. Like all marsupials, kangaroos carry their offspring in a pouch. The mother kangaroo may nurse her young, called a joy, for up to a year. Because the joy stay in a pouch for so long, kangaroos almost never have more than one baby at a time. They typically raise one liter per year, so environmental conditions sometimes make this impossible. If they survive childhood, kangaroos can live as long as 18 years in the wild, even longer in captivity. Good. So um, we actually, in English, we actually would say a joey, a joey, joey, joey. Uh huh. So um, the baby kangaroo is called a what? A joey. A joey. Yeah, that was kind joey. of a trick, kind of a trick question. And we kind of talked about this that the mothers carry them in their pouch. And um, how many babies or how many joeys does a kangaroo have at one the time? Joey. One, one, one per year. One joey. Uh huh. And how long does a joey stay with its mother? One year. One year, exactly. Now, what would prevent a mama kangaroo from having a baby or having a joey? The weather? Environmental conditions? Uh, yeah. Weather conditions? yeah, the weather, the uh, bad environmental conditions, exactly. And um, how long can they live in the wild? 18, 18 years. 18 years. What if, what if they're like at a zoo or something? Longer. Captivity, longer month. Yeah, they can, they can be, they can live longer. So, good. Um... All right, um, Gabriel, let's have you finish us off with this last paragraph. Okay. Except for the smallest species, like the moose, the rat, kangaroo, kangaroo, which eats insects and small animals, kangaroos are herbivores. The system is on grass and open forest vegetation. Like many other grazing animals, kangaroos, uh, kangaroos have developed multi hunger stomachs to aid in the breakdown of otherwise indigestible plant material. Good. So, um, are they, are the majority of kangaroos carnivores? No. No, no. only the small ones. Herbivores. Yeah, so an herbivore eats what? Grass, plants. Eat plants. Mm -hmm. They eat uh, plants. Yeah, exactly. How many of you are herbivores? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're carnivores. Yeah. Yeah, um, or an omni most, most people are um, omnivores. Omnivores. Omnivores, um, which means omnivores. that we eat both plants and animals, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, some of us, I imagine, might be vegetarians. I'm not. <laughs> so I got to have my meat. But um, yeah, so most of them are herbivores. And what's special about 
their um, their organs or what's special about their stomach? Multi-chambered, chambered. Multi-chambered. Yeah, multi-chambered. Which what is? Does anybody can you, can anybody explain what a multi-chambered stomach is? It can do a lot of things, maybe. Say that again. It can do a lot of things. It can do, yeah, there's a lot of parts to it, right? Um, another animal that has a multi-chambered stomach is a cow. Um, and basically, if, if an animal has a multi-chambered stomach, they can pretty much eat anything in terms of um, vegetation because it allows... It, the multi-chambered stomach allows everything to break down. So even if they're eating something that's bad for them, it more than likely is not going to affect them because their stomach is able to break it down. Now, just go ahead. Was there a question? No? Okay. Now we've gone over like the basic comprehension of this. But the questions, and it's very important that when you're taking tests, that you do that when you, when you read a passage. You definitely want to make sure that you understand all the vocabulary, you understand the subject. So the subject of this passage is what? Kangaroos. Kangaroos. Exactly. So you want to make sure that you understand as much as you possibly can about the subject and the vocabulary and what's going on so that it can prepare you for these other questions that are going to come at you, um, which is what we're going to look at now. Um, okay, so we have this first question, and let's see, could I get, Gabriel, could you read this first question out loud for me and the four choices? Okay. Question 1. According to the passage, which of the following is not true about kangaroo? Kangaroos carry their offspring in a pouch. Kangaroos have multi chambered stomachs. Kangaroos use their tail for balance. Kangaroos can weigh nearly 300 pounds. Okay, so out of those four choices, which one is not true? The last one. Last one? Yes, the last one. Kangaroos can weigh nearly 300 pounds. Is that true? Four. True is uh, 200. Yes, 200. exactly. They can weigh nearly 200 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Um, hi, Mustafa. How are you? Uh, fine, and you? I'm doing well. Where are you from, Mustafa? Uh, from Iraq. <laughs> from Iraq. Very nice. Very nice. Um, can you read the second question for me? Okay. And the four choices. Okay. Uh, when do kangaroos uh, switch from walking on four legs to walking on two legs? And then go ahead and read the, the four choices for me too. Okay. Uh, when they are uh, frightened, uh, when they need to move fast, when their front limbs are holding something, when their front limbs are tired. Uh -huh. And what do you guys think? Which First which one. Uh, first one. The first one when they are frightened. Okay. Yes. Any other ideas, possibly? I think last one. The Any second. Other? The second. Yeah, the second one. So now we talked about that. Generally, they probably will be on their hind legs when they're frightened, but we have to remember what the passage actually said. And normally when they're frightened, they would have to move, they would want to move fast. So that's the other thing that you want to always keep in mind is don't let your own um, opinions 
about something get in the way of what the text actually says. So the text actually says when they feel the need to move. Now we can assume that. Um, no. Hold on one second. Mustafa, it sounds like there's some wind coming from you. So if I mute you, no worries. Just when you want to talk, just unmute yourself. But um, we can assume that when kangaroos want to move quickly, it's because they're frightened. But that's not what the text says. All the text lets us know is that it's when they want to move quickly. So again, when you're taking a test of some sort, don't let your mind play tricks on you. Don't let your own opinions get in the way of what is actually right in front of you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. And um, Sophianne, let me have you read number three for me. Yes. The follow sentence can be added to the first paragraph. Where would it be or would it best fit in the paragraph? Click on the square to add the sentence to the paragraph. Okay, so we have this passage, and the passage is, excuse me, ever since they were discovered by early settlers, kangaroos have fascinated biologists. There we go. Okay. So um, ever since they were discovered by early settlers, kangaroos have fascinated biologists. They are unique animals considered both comical and exotic. They are found only in Australia, New Zealand, and a few surrounding islands. So the sentence that we're going to want to insert and at some point is perhaps because of their existence in such remote locations, kangaroos are regarded with fascination by school children all the world over. Where do you think that would best fit in this paragraph? You think, did somebody say they thought because in number two? Yes. Yes, in, in number two. Okay, anybody else have any ideas? I, I think it's number two because uh, number two texts Three. are comical. Um, because of they are comical, they are fascinating school people, and they are also exotic. exotic. Okay. Um, I think uh, four. Okay. Why do you Why do you think number four? <laughs> because uh, in the they it says they perhaps because of their places. existence in such uh, remote locations. Okay, I would I would agree. I would agree with number with number four, um, and this yes. is why. Um, when you look at at this sentence that they are found only in Australia, New Zealand, and a few surrounding islands, and you look at the sentence that we're trying to insert, the sentence that we're trying to insert starts off by talking about the remote locations. So okay. it's a nice segue or it's a nice transition because first we were talking about where you can find them and the next sentence starts off about their um, about the locations. Um, number two would probably be my second choice um, to insert it for the reason um, kind of with what you guys were talking about um, the sentence that talks about that they fascinated biologists, this sentence also talks about the fascination of school children. However, why this would be my second choice is because if you read it out loud, which I'll do in just a second, um, you might be thrown off by the first part of the sentence that you're inserting um, about the remote locations because we haven't been told yet by this point where we can find kangaroos. 
So, for example, it would read, ever since they were discovered by early settlers, kangaroos have fascinated biologists. Perhaps because of their existence in such remote locations, kangaroos are regarded with fascination by school children all the world over. If I was reading that, I would start to wonder where the remote location is. Now, if I read it this way and inserted it in number four, they are found only in Australia, New Zealand, and a few surrounding islands. Perhaps because of their existence in such remote locations, kangaroos are regarded with fascination by school children all the world over. I am no longer wondering about where this remote, remote location is. I know where it is because I just read about it. Yeah. So that's why I would choose number four. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Um, Teacher. Yes. yes. What's the difference between ever since and just since? What's the difference between ever since and just since? Ever since is a little bit more, um, oh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? It's It's got a little bit more urgency to it. Um, ever since this happened, so it's it's more of like a, a direct point. Ever since this point, instead of since this point, it's just a little bit more. Um, oh, why can't I think of the word? This has been happening to me all day long. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little bit more, urgent's not the right word that I'm looking for. Um, Being, being sick and pregnant, my brain just isn't working. Um, it's, it's a little bit more emphasis. That's the word I'm looking for. Ever since has a lot more emphasis than just since. So if you say ever since this point, then you're putting a lot more emphasis on that particular point in time. Does that okay. make sense, Adolfo? Yeah, but okay. they're pretty much the same meaning. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's just you put that word ever there for more emphasis. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Thanks. Uh-huh. I can always count on you, Adolfo, for questions. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, okay, Adolfo, let's have you, do, speaking of Adolfo, let's have you read number four for me, including the paragraph. Okay. Look at the word species in paragraph 2. Click on the word that's closest meaning to species. There are more than 50 species of kangaroos in existence today. The best known and largest species is, is the red and gray kangaroos, which can stand up to 6 feet and can weigh nearly 200 pounds. But there are kangaroo breeds that are much smaller, such as the muskrat kangaroo which is only one foot tall. Kangaroos are very adaptable and can live in almost any climate. They can be found in mountainous, mountainous regions, deserts, deserts, deserts. grasslands, even remote islands of the coast of southwestern Australia. Okay, so the word species, what other word in this paragraph is the closest in meaning to the word species. Breeds. breeds. Yes. Yes. Very good, guys. Yeah, breeds. Exactly. Um, does anybody need any clarification on that? Or is that clear? It's clear. Okay. It's clear. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and Amp, can I have you do the next one for me, number five? Yeah, but I, I... Did you have a question? I can see the... I can see the writing. You can't see it? Or you can? No. No. I cannot. You cannot. Yes. Uh, is it too small? Or is no, it no, no, um, I am just uh, uh, now the dog. 
I am watching the dog now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. on the on the yeah. bottom on uh, um on the bottom where you see all of our pictures, click on the one that yeah. is, is me, and it'll bring it up big for you. Okay. Look at the first sentences of the passage. What does the pronoun they refer to um, disappear? Ever since the no the glory. Uh oh. They were discovered by early settlers. Kangaroos has fascinated biologists. Settlers, kangaroos, biologists, native. Okay. Kangaroos. Yeah, good, exactly. Yes. So the word they, the pronoun they here is referring to kangaroos. Ever since they were discovered by early settlers. We know it's not settlers, and this is another kind of test-taking strategy. Um, we know it's not settlers because we were just told that they were discovered by early settlers. So you can cross that one off the list. Um, you know that it's not biologists because you're told in this clause that kangaroos have fascinated biologists. So you know that they, that biologists don't fascinate biologists, so you can cross that one off the list. Natives is not even mentioned anywhere here, so you can cross that one off the list. So the only logical choice then would be kangaroos. Okay. Good job. Um, Daniel, can you do number six for me? Okay. Look at the word nimble in paragraph three. Click on the word that is closest in meaning to nimble. Kangaroos are very well sweet to their environment. They have adapted over a million of years to fit into their ecological niche. They have large ears and relatively small heads. Their front limbs are very small, but their paws are very nimble. Their hind legs are very large and powerful. When they are moving slowly, kangaroos walk on all four limbs, with the front limbs very touching the ground. But when they feel the need to move quickly, they stand nearly up screen and stand hopping in their hind legs. When they begin to hop, kangaroos use their muscular, agile tails to balance their, themselves and to help them change direction. Good. So which word do you think is the closest in meaning to nimble? Mm. Uh, quickly. Quickly. Okay. Why do you think it's quickly? Uh, because uh, nimble means fast or yeah you can do, yeah and when you're taking a test that's that's true when you're taking a test you can draw on your own knowledge of words so if you know that nimble means quick then obviously that would be easy for you now if you didn't here's a strategy that you could use in order to figure that out um, we're talking that their front limbs are very small, but their paws are very nimble. Okay, so we know that their paws here are attached to their front limbs. When we talk about um, when they need, the, when they feel the need to move quickly, they stand nearly upright. So in that context, then you would know that quickly has something to do with their front limbs and their paws. Um, so their paws both on their and paws here can mean on their front limbs as well as their hind limbs or their legs. So that would be a way to figure out that nimble means quickly especially when you are looking at the paragraph and you look that it says when they feel the need and it's talking about how they change uh, their stance. So the first they're standing on all fours, now they're standing on two. 
So that would be how you would try to figure out if you did not know that nimble mint quickly. You would have a guess that that would be a good guess to make. That nimble would equal quickly. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Number seven. Gabriel, can you do number seven for us? Yes. Yes. Look at the word then in the paragraph three. Meet on the word that they is referring to. Kangaroos are very well suited to their environment. The environment. They have adapted over millions of years to fit into their ecological niche. They have large ears and the native small heads. Their horns and leaves are very small, like their paws are very nimble. Their heel legs are very their heel legs are very large and powerful. They are moving slowly. Kangaroos walk on the own for wings with the ground leaves very close to the ground. But when they feel they need to move the tree, they can nearly upright and start hopping on their hind legs. When they begin to hop, kangaroos use their muscular agile tails to balance themselves and to help them change direction. Okay, so what is them referring to in this paragraph? Mesola? Kangaroos. 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 Yes, it is. Can why, why did you come to the conclusion that it's kangaroos? What gave you that clue? Because uh, in the first part of the last uh, sentences, uh -huh. They're talking about um, when they begin to hope, kangaroos use their muscular, agile tails to balance themselves and to help them. I'm talking about the kangaroos change the direction. Yeah, good, exactly. So you're looking at them basically as a, as a pronoun here, right? So you're looking at it as a pronoun, and you know that we're not talking about tails. Because um, it's saying that they use their muscular agile tails to balance themselves. So mm -hmm. themselves, if you look at that word, you know that themselves is also referring to kangaroos. To kangaroos. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. to help them change direction. We're not, t again, we're not talking, uh, the proper, I would say that if you were taking this test, the most common mistake that people would probably make would be to say that them was referring to tails. Um, and it's not referring to the tails. It's referring to the kangaroos themselves. Um, you could also think about it this way. Do tails change direction? Like, literally. Maybe. Mm, no. no. I mean, they're, they're, no. Yeah, they're, they're attached. I mean... My, sure, like my, I have dogs and cats. My dogs and cats wag their tails, and sure, the, it changes direction, but it's still attached to the animal. The animal actually has to be the one to change the direction. So you could also look at it that way. In a log, you know, think about it. Try to think about it in a logical, um, a logical sense. Um, let me see. Let okay, boy, help me out with your name. Is it? Mahadeen? Yeah, that's correct. Did I, did I say that right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, all right. <laughs> How are you? I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm from, thanks. Where are you from? I'm from France, actually. From where? From France. From France? Yeah. Very nice. My name's from France. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Very cool. Can you, um, can you do number eight for us, Mahadeen? Yes. Awesome. All right. So let me get back there for you. Okay. Go ahead and read number eight for us. Um, look at the word there in paragraph four. Click on the word that there refers to. Like all marsupials, kangaroos carry their offspring in a pouch. The mother kangaroo may nurse her young called a joy for up to a year. 
because the joys stay in a pouch for so long. Kangaroos almost never have more than one baby at a time. They typically raise one liter per, per year, though environmental conditions sometimes make this impossible if they survive childhood. Kangaroos can live as long as 18 years in the wild, even longer in captivity. Okay, so what is their, what is the pronoun there referred to in this paragraph? Um, their babies? Of the prank. Uh, but it's, it's referring to the kangaroos. Kangaroos. Yeah, yeah, kangaroos. yeah, exactly. This is kind of a trick question. Once again, we're still referring to the kangaroos. So um, their offspring, it, it can't possibly be referring to the offspring because the offspring obviously has to belong to their. So your, your next step is to figure out who their is. And um, you would find that out simply by going back and figuring out whose offspring are we talking about. Well, we're talking about kangaroos. This whole, this whole uh, passage is talking about kangaroos. So it's safe to assume that there is referring once again to the kangaroos themselves. Okay. So, yep, exactly. Now, um, let me see. Now here's here's now this isn't on here but here's a question. If I were to say look at the word litter and what word would litter refer to? Kangaroo baby. Yes. Yes, in um, that okay. yes, exactly. Now litter would refer to you could either say joey or offspring. Exactly. Um, they oh, brand. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Because the litter goes back to the joey or the offspring. Now, if I said they, who would... Kangaroos. Exactly. Back to the kangaroos. Uh -huh. Yeah. Back to the kangaroos. Is, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, uh, I have just one question. It's uh, for the pronunciation of the word uh, Joey. It's Joey or Joey? Joey. Yeah. yeah. Joey. Yeah. Joey. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. Thanks. Yep. No worries. No worries. Adolfo, do you have any questions for me? Not now. No. No. Uh, I have one question. Sure, go for it. In RBT TOEFL, how you can uh, recognize minor idea and major idea? How can you recognize a main idea? Minor idea and major idea. A main idea, like in a specific paragraph, how can you recognize? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, like, let's use, let's use this paragraph as, as an example. Okay, so... The major idea of this paragraph, what do you think it would be? Uh, about of the prank <laughs> of the kangaroo. Okay, now that would actually be the main idea. The main idea would be about the offspring because the paragraph is talking constantly about the offspring. But think about Again, think about who the offspring belongs to. Kangaroo. <laughs> exactly. So your kangaroo, the kangaroos would be your major idea. And if you're looking at the entire passage, so if you're looking at all three of the paragraphs that we read, what was the consistent subject of all three? Oh, okay. It, the consistent subject was the kangaroo. Now, if you look at the paragraphs individually, you have different main ideas for each paragraph. So, it, like you said, in, in this in this one, where the main idea is the offspring, in this paragraph, what would be the main idea? What are we talking about in this paragraph? 
Okay, I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in this one, Thank we would you. be talk. Yeah, we would be talking about. Um, in the second paragraph, we're talking about their physical traits. So, uh huh. Yeah, and then if you want to get into it, then we would have like supporting details. So a supporting detail would be things like um, kangaroos carrying their joeys in a pouch. That's a supporting detail. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, what else? Um, there, when they when they feel the need to move quickly, they they get on their hind legs. Hind, the the idea about their hind legs would be a supporting detail. Things okay. things of that nature. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Yep. Does anybody else? And it doesn't necessarily. We have like two minutes left, so even if you don't have a question about what we just did, if you just have a question in terms of test taking or something of that that I might be able to help you with. Adolfo, I'm so shocked. <laughs> no? Everybody's crystal clear, huh? Do you guys consider yourselves good test takers? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what would you say is your biggest struggle with taking a test? To remember what we remembering like remembering what you just read yes because sometimes um, we don't have no time to read the read the read the the, the paragraph uh -huh. so sometimes it's useful it's useful to have a good memory yeah I, I agree I agree especially when you're under pressure and you know you have 60 minutes to complete something um, one thing I would recommend to combat that is when, and this takes some practice, but when you are reading, even if you're doing the first time reading, something that I would suggest doing is underlining things that you find to be important. The key to that is not underlining the whole paragraph. So like I said, that kind of thing, <laughs> that kind of thing takes some practice. But um, I agree with you. When you're under pressure, trying to remember everything is very difficult. So when you're going through the first read, my suggestion would be is to, um, as soon as you see a phrase that you're like, ooh, that, that might be important later on, underline that phrase. And that, that could help you with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the, for the no? No worries, no worries.